evening, Mr. Medina. Mr. Medina holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Electrical Engineering from MIT, where he attended a Navy ROTC scholarship. Upon graduation, he served 12 years, active and reserve, in the U.S. Navy, completing service with the rank of Lieutenant Commander. Mr. Medina has worked at Shell Oil Company, Electronic Data Systems, and Hewlett Packard in various roles in project engineering and program management holding various leadership and program management positions. Currently, Mr. Medina is owner of Medina Consulting Services, providing project and program management capabilities for IT infrastructure programs in Houston. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, teachers, students, parents, and other members of the audience. I would like to begin by thanking Ms. Ella Robertson for this opportunity to be the guest speaker at tonight's induction ceremony. I am honored and humbled to be asked to speak as we welcome this wonderful group of new inductees into the National Honor Society. This is undoubtedly a proud moment for me. Each of you here tonight has earned the privilege to be part of the National Honor Society. This is a tremendous honor, and I congratulate each of you and your parents for both taking and supporting the many steps that it has taken to come this far. The purpose of the National Honor Society is to create enthusiasm for scholarship, to stimulate desire to render service, to promote leadership, and to develop character. What should make you and your parents the most proud is not just this honor itself, but what you had to do to earn it. You were selected based on scholarship and recommended by your teachers based on your character. Those of you graduating have come to learn and experience how much service and leadership are a part of the National Honor Society. Those of you being inducted tonight we'll have the opportunity to grow through practicing these qualities in the coming months. These four traits, or virtues, scholarship, service, leadership, and character, were not selected at random. They are closely interrelated, build upon one another, and form the core of a sound individual, family, society, nation, and world. All four must function in concert to truly unlock the full potential of achievement, service, and accomplishment. I would like to speak tonight about the small ways we demonstrate the National Honor Society standards of scholarship, leadership, service, and character. Poet and literary critic James Russell Lowell said, true scholarship consists in knowing not what things exist, but what they mean. It's not memory, but judgment. Scholarship goes beyond earning good grades. There are opportunities for learning everywhere, whether from books, interactions with others, classes, or your own observations. Being scholarly involves making informed decisions, <coughs> examining choices, and thinking about the world around us and our place in it. Scholars take nothing at face value and are always striving to find more meaning in the world. Scholarship does not end with simply knowing pieces of information. <clears throat> it necessarily requires valuing that knowledge and applying it to wisely lead others. Leaders are not necessarily born. Leadership is not being elected or appointed to an office. The office doesn't teach someone how to be a leader. Leadership is an attitude you develop over time. When I think of the great world leaders or even great local or school leaders, they have a few things in common. They have a vision. They are very skilled at communicating this vision to others. They build trust easily with others because they're clear in what they stand for. 
and what they won't stand for. They are willing to take risks to make things better. They make difficult decisions with compassion and admit their mistakes. Are you one to stand up for what you believe in and face the music, even when that music happens to be uncomfortable, unpleasant? Do you have a purpose? And follow that purpose to get the ends that you desire. Do you have a vision? These are all questions that true leaders answer in the affirmative. But how do you become a leader? Each small decision you make takes you one step closer. Remember, the goal of leadership is not to get power, but to get your vision and your purposes across. Leadership is about inspiration of oneself and of others. Leaders inspire others with confidence, with a desire to follow. President John Quincy Adams once said, if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. Now many see community service as a means to an end. Some might see it as a way to get service points by socializing. Others may view it as unfortunate or inconvenient necessity of high school life. But is that truly community service? Service is not a single thing, a single event. It's not the collection of money in support of a, in homeroom of a fundraiser. That's a service project. But service, it's not a social event or field trip with your friends to attend because it's fun. Now, and contrary to popular belief, it's not something you do just because it looks good on a college or scholarship application. Service is a sincere gift of yourself to others. Service is an attitude. Are you doing it for the right reasons? Community service involves volunteering for activities that do not benefit you financially or materially. True service happens all the time and anywhere. No tangible benefit to yourself. The key to service is that it help, happens selflessly. You should not expect to be recognized for true service, but should desire to do it simply for the humbling experience that it is. You should have that warm and fuzzy feeling of doing something for another human in need. Mahatma Gandhi said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Service to others lies in the foundation of positive change. It makes life worthwhile. When we serve others, extraordinary things begin to happen. It makes the servant rich by what they give up. It's much easier to live near or with or be inspired or follow someone who has the heart of a servant. Now finally, character. If there's any one thing that's evidenced by your daily choices, it is your character. <clears throat> to me, a positive character is the foundation on which service, leadership, and academic excellence can express themselves. Without good character, none of the other three really matter much. Without good character, character is really the most basic and important quality that National Honor Society members possess. Our character defines much of who we are, how we think, why we act, what we say or do. Character isn't measured in one instance at a time, but rather over all instances in time. The greatest indicator of character Honesty. Honesty allows us to build trust, to give us a sense of right and wrong. With honesty, you take responsibility for your actions. Character is doing the right thing when nobody is looking. <clears throat> it's what you are when no one else is around to be impressed. I truly believe what Thomas Macaulay said, the measure of a man's real character is what he would do if he knew he would never be found out. What do you do when no one's around? Being honest and honorable when others are watching is important. Being true to yourself is tantamount. It's the integrity of those private decisions that will define your character. It's the large things and the small things you will decide to do. Your ultimate success and happiness will depend on making good choices and decisions. So, I implore all of you 
to go out and make a different in, difference in this world. But what does that mean, make a difference? Starting today, the challenge before you is to increase and strengthen your cells in these areas discussed tonight through practice and experience. Strive to develop and be individuals of great character who desire to serve others as leaders, always seeking to gain valued knowledge to make changes to better society and the world around you. Being inducted in the National Honor Society is not the finish line. Rather, it's only the beginning of living and experiencing lives of incredible potential. I am confident that each of you already possesses the capacity and capability to positively impact the lives of others. Make your life important by making a positive impact on the lives of others. To conclude, I congratulate you again on this honor. You are truly the best of the best. Enjoy yourself. And remember, as Mother Teresa said, life is a promise. Fulfill it. Thank you.